Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to be talking about something very interesting and uh, and I hope you will join me. So um, what we have here in my inventory is every single rune in the game um, up to the highest rune, which is the Zod rune, uh, to the lowliest rune, which is the L rune. And, um, and I've done a lot of videos, uh, especially uh, recently, about how to use your perfect gems and your, uh, your runes in Herodric cube recipes and all sorts of interesting things. But today what I wanted to talk about was um, the runes themselves and using them as a uh, socket for items. So if you are not making a rune word, if you are not creating some uh, masterful Herodric cube recipe, what are the runes good for by themselves, separate of all of that madness? Well, that's what I hope to go over with you here today. And for that purpose, we also have the, um, the gems as well. And the reason why we have the gems here is because we want to compare what the runes can do to what the gems can do and decide for ourselves which one is better. Because there are situations where you might think, hey, I could put this rune in an armor, but the gem does something better, and so it's like, well, why would I bother with the rune when I can use the gem instead, especially when the gem is less expensive than the rune. So we're going to start off with the lowest rune here, which is the L rune. Uh, the L rune has some interesting effects on it, which is uh, basically just plus light radius and plus defense, um, as well as plus attack rating if you put it in a weapon. Now, uh, it's a level 11 rune, and uh, despite the fact that it is useful in many, many rune word recipes, it is not very useful in a low-level character. Um, I suppose as a low-level character, you could just take a whole bunch of L runes and just shove them in every single socket that you have. Um, you know, if you had two in your helmet, three in your armor, uh, three in your shield, uh, that would be what, 15, 15, 15, so that's uh, 45, and then uh, another 45. So we'd be looking at like, I want to say like 125 defense at level 11. Uh, which isn't even really that much. So uh, the L rune, unfortunately, does not really have the most amazing uses. Now that 50 to attack rating on the weapon at level 11 might actually be worth using. Um, but see, the beautiful thing about the L rune is that it does have some very interesting recipes that it can go in uh, in a weapon, and uh, and that attack rating can be useful. But maybe if you just had two L runes laying around and you were a little lobby and you had like a little two-socket sword or something, I still don't see it. Uh, at level 11, you should be wielding something better than a little two-socket sword that you picked up off the ground. Um, also, none of the other uh, items here, or the the gems and runes, um, are uh, are going to be worse than the L rune. So, like, take, for instance, the Amethyst, which gives plus 150 to attack rating. Um, that's at level 18, and if we look at a flawless amethyst, which is level 15, and then a flawed amethyst, which I believe is level 10, uh, the flawed amethyst still gives more attack rating than the L rune. Um, and as far as defense is concerned, I guess you could say that the um, the emerald is similar because dexterity does give defense, and uh, and if you wanted to build defense, I would just build dexterity instead because it's going to give you block rating, defense, and it's going to give you um, a bonus to your dexterity, which is nice for equipping weapons and so forth. So the, the Eld Rune really doesn't have much use at all. Uh, the Eld Rune is a very interesting one uh, because it offers 75% damage to undead, 50 attack rating to undead, uh, armor 15% slower stamina drain, helms 15% slower stamina drain, and here's the real money maker is shields 7% increased chance of blocking is actually really nice. If you are a character who wants some increased blocking at a really low level and you have a decent shield, you can throw one, maybe two, maybe even three of these in a shield, and you're looking at 7, 14, and uh, 21. Right, 21? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Yeah, 21. What did I tell myself? 21% um, chance of faster blocking. And if you take a look at the gems, none of the gems offer any kind of faster blocking except for maybe dexterity which is the uh, Perfect Emerald. But if you look closely, the Perfect Emerald does not offer dexterity in shields. And this is one of the things that we'll notice um, many, many times when it comes to the runes, is that the runes oftentimes offer an effect which is similar to the gems, but works in a different socket than the gems work in. So for instance, the, um, the attack rating works in the same socket of weapons on the L rune, 
but on the Eldrune, uh, it gives blocking on a shield, whereas the Perfect Emerald does not give blocking on a shield. It only gives dexterity in helmets and armor. On a shield, it gives poison resistance. And we'll come back to that later. So the Eldrune uh, really only has one really good use there, and that is uh, the 7% increased chance of blocking. Now, of course, you could also make a 3-socket weapon for um, for Talrosh's tomb. I, I, it would have a very niche use, but uh, but a 3-socket like mace that already has 50% increased uh, damage to undead, um, and then you had 75, 75, 75, which would be a rather large amount of damage to undead. You would be talking about... Um, uh, what, 150 for two runes, and then you'd be talking about uh, 225 for three runes, and uh, and then 50% base on the weapon, so we'd be looking at 275% damage to undead uh, with three eld runes in a weapon, and then you would also get the attack rating as well, so you get 150 attack rating to undead, and I guess if you were just, just, to, just to make a undead bashing weapon, it could be useful, I suppose. Um, but Eldrune's really great for shields. So next on the list is a rune that, um, that is very interesting. It is the Tear Rune. And the Tear Rune is plus two mana after each kill. Um, and specifically plus two to mana after each kill. And it is plus two to mana after each kill in every single item that you can socket. Now, does this have any parallels over in the gems? Um, it does have some parallels. Uh, the only parallel really that even comes close is the, uh, Skull with uh, armor regeneration, so regenerate mana 19%. Uh, but the two things function completely differently. So the way that the tier rune works is that every time you kill a target, no matter what the target is, two mana is just instantly added to your mana pool. So if you are killing things in fast succession, you're going to see a huge amount of mana restored to your pool because every single monster that dies is going to give you two, 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 two. And um, people will take three of these and put them in an armor at early levels because they can get plus two, plus two, plus two, which is plus six to mana after each kill. Uh, they'll also put two in a helmet, which is another plus four. And you can also put three in a shield, which is six. And uh, if you can imagine, if you had six here and six here, that's 12. And then four here, so that's, uh, it's, what, 16? So that's 16 to mana after each kill. And then you could also throw um, three in a weapon. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22. So 22 to mana after each kill, which means that every time I kill the target, my mana would just fill completely back up, which is absolutely amazing for low-level sorceresses and uh, characters that spam mana on a regular basis. Now, do keep an eye out, though, because I have found several jewels with plus three to mana after each kill, along with other effects. And, uh, and I got really excited because I found one the other day that was plus three to mana after each kill and 7% uh, uh, enhanced damage or seven to max damage or something like that. And it was only level 16. And, uh, and I took it and I socketed it in my Twitch throw because, uh, because plus three to mana after each kill with max damage on it was absolutely amazing. And it was the same level as the Twitch throw and I used Twitch throws on all my low level characters. They're melee or ranged anyway. So keep in mind that tier runes can be absolutely amazing for mana recovery and um, and utilize them because uh, low-level characters don't really use a lot of mana. If you are a uh, paladin, for instance, how many how many mana how much mana is a low-level pally uh, zeal cost? It's like two mana, right? Or three mana? There you go, right there. Every single time you kill a target, you're getting enough mana back for at least one more zeal. Um, now, granted, as a melee character, you have the unique opportunity to be able to use mana steal. But uh, a little bit of mana after each kill is not bad either. All right, so moving on to the next rune, uh, we have the Nef rune. Now, the Nef rune is uh, weapons knockback, which can be very, very handy for ranged classes. If you are a uh, an Amazon or any type of bow character um, and you would like to have a little bit of knockback, knockback is absolutely amazing to keep the monsters away from you. Uh, defense versus missile is kind of lackluster because, number one, it only works versus missile. And number two, it's never really enough. Like, uh, even if you have, like, 250 defense versus missile, it never seems to be enough to actually make a difference. Um, can you get knockback on any gems? The answer to that question is no. Um, can you get defense versus missile to any gems? The answer to that is kind of maybe. Uh, like I said earlier, the dex rune will give you defense and it will give you block chance. And um, I feel like the uh, perfect emerald is a good choice for um, defense. Uh, versus those particular things, but as you can see the defense versus missile works in three things and the de dexterity only works in two 
So, I mean, it's really up to you. A lot of uh, recipes use Nef runes, and you'll find defense versus missile in those recipes, like Nadir. And um, really, I think what Nef runes are used most for is that knockback. Um, next on the list is a very popular rune. It is the Eth rune. And the Eth rune has a lot of different uses um, in rune words and uh, in Haradric cube recipes, all sorts of things. But, um, but specifically, uh, the Eth rune is great for its, uh, its effects as well. So it has negative 25% target defense. Um, and this applies to you only. So if I take this Eth rune and I socket it in my weapon, um, and I go out and I hit somebody and they have 1,000 defense and I smack them in the eyeball, um, they will lose 25% of their defense to me, which means they will only have 750 defense at that point. And, um, and this is great because it makes it a lot easier for me specifically to hit uh, targets as a melee or a ranged character. Um, this can also be useful on a mercenary as well to help him hit things. The other effects here are uh, regenerate mana 15% on, on armor, helms, and shields. And we saw a very similar effect with the Perfect Skull. And we look at the Perfect Skull, the Perfect Skull has regenerate mana 19% and replenish life 5. So the Perfect Skull wins in almost every category and it's uh, it's a higher level at level 18, but if we were to grab a Flawless Skull, which is one tier lower than the Perfect Skull, it would still beat the Ethrune because it would be 15% and it would also have replenished life as well. So using Ethrunes for the regenerate mana, not the greatest idea. Uh, especially when you have a better choice, which is much cheaper. Um, honestly, flawless skulls are pretty easy to come by, and um, I usually have like seven or eight of them laying around in my stash. Uh, Eth runes, on the other hand, I'm constantly using for things like stealth armors and uh, and and reducing uh, defense on melee weapons and things like that. So I generally tend not to use those for the regenerate mana. Uh, the regenerate mana also tends to be kind of lackluster compared to something like the tier rune. Um, because regenerate mana goes off of the mana pool that you have. So if you have a very small mana pool, um, it's not going to help you very much. Whereas if you have a very large mana pool, regenerate mana comes into effect. So like someone like a sorceress who might have like eight or 900 mana is going to have a much better time with regenerate mana than a paladin who only has like 20. Uh, next on the list is the Ithrune, and the Ithrune has a very interesting effect of plus 9 to maximum damage, uh, with damage taking goes to mana on the armor, helm, and shield. Now, there is no damage taking goes to mana on any of these items, and, uh, and there is no plus to maximum damage on any of these items. Um, so this rune is kind of in a realm of its own. Uh, do keep in mind, though, that you can find jewels that are plus 20 to maximum damage with the same level 15 level requirement. Um, so that's uh, interesting. Um, I've actually found uh, 21 to maximum damage at level 18 requirement. Um, you can find a little bit lower than that that are still higher than 9. So on I, honestly, I don't really see the Ithrun coming in handy specifically for that max damage because you can find so much better jewels to put into items with max damage. Um, just the other day, I had a low-level dueler come in who uh, traded me for my... Um, <laughs> all my my low level max damage jewels because he was trying to make a, a ridiculous character and um, armor 15% damage taken goes to mana and uh, helm and shield now this is an interesting statistic and it actually is very useful so what this is is that if you get hit by a physical damage attack um, it has to be physical damage not elemental damage um, the monster will hit you say for 100 damage 15% uh, of that will be taken and given to your mana. Now, it does not actually remove 15% of the damage incoming. Keep that in mind. So you still take 100 damage. The difference is, is that when you take 100 damage, you also heal 15 to your mana by having this effect, which is very, very useful. Uh, damage taken goes to mana is, is great for melee characters that are getting in there in the thick of it and getting hit all the time. Uh, there's a very popular item that has 50% uh, damage taken goes to mana, and I used to use it all the time on my melee characters, because it made their lives so much easier in regards to mana consumption, and it's called Night Smoke. Uh, there is no other analog to the damage taken goes to mana jewel, though, so if you just really wanted some damage taken goes to mana, maybe you were an energy shield sorceress, um, or maybe you uh, maybe you just uh, you were a melee character and you were just tired of running out of mana all the time, uh, this is an interesting way to solve that dilemma. Um, next on the list is the Tal Rune. And, uh, and these runes are very interesting, and I want to talk about these in tandem. So uh, we're going to grab all four of these runes. 
And I'm going to separate them by one because they're not allowed to touch. They've been bad boys in school. And, uh, and we're going to put their analog underneath of them. So uh, in the gem form, we have a gem which matches every single one of these gems, these, uh, these runes. And it's important to note this because if we look at the Tal rune, the Tal rune is 75 poison damage over 5 seconds. But the Emerald is 100 poison damage over 7 seconds. So um, if you were going to choose between 75 poison damage over 5 and 100 poison damage over 7, um, you could make that deliberation. I believe they're about the same because of the uh, increased number of seconds on the, uh, the perfect emerald versus the uh, Tal rune. I think it has to do with the number of seconds that the poison damage is over. Um, but I think, the, I think the perfect emerald actually wins in this regard. And then with shields, we get 35% resistance to shields, but the emerald gives 40% resistance to shields. So if you were specifically going to socket this into an item with no rune word, um, the perfect emerald wins in the resistance category. And you'll notice that there's the same thing going on here on every single one of these. So the Rao rune is 5 to 30 fire damage with 35% uh, fire, and the perfect ruby is 15 to 20 fire damage with 40% fire. And uh, even though the Rao rune has a higher maximum, you notice that the perfect ruby has a much higher minimum, um, and uh, it almost seems like the perfect ruby wins here as well. And then we go to the Ort Rune, which is 1 to 50 Lightning, and then 35% uh, Lightning Resist. And same thing here, we've got 40% Lightning Resist and 1 to 40. So the Ort Rune actually wins in Lightning Damage on the uh, on that Lightning category. And then we have the Thull Rune, which is 3 to 14 Cold, and the Perfect Sapphire, which is 10 to 14 Cold. So the Perfect Sapphire definitely wins as far as the Cold Damage is concerned. Now, um, if you were considering making a weapon for a Mercenary, like an early early game mercenary. A really easy way to make an early game mercenary is to stack them up with some uh, with some elemental damage. You should get like a bow or something like that or a, like a, a highest number of socket spear that you can find and you just put a bunch of these gems in there and you give them tons of elemental damage. This is where these uh, considerations might come in handy. Like if you were going to do uh, lightning damage, it looks like the ort rune is way better than a perfect topaz so you might as well do orts. Um, but if you're doing cold damage, the perfect sapphire is way better than the uh, Ort rune, so you're probably going to do a perfect sapphire and so forth and so on. Now keep in mind though that the uh, Tal, the Rao, the Ort, and the Thal also give resistances to armor and helms. And the perfect emerald, perfect ruby, perfect topaz, and perfect sapphire do not. All right, so, so that's very interesting to take that into account when you're thinking about these particular items. All right, so um, the Thul rune, the Ort rune, the Rel rune, and the Tal rune have many uses in the game besides just simply being runes, but I wanted to point out their specific rune possibilities. Um, and now we're going to move on to the Am rune, which is 7% lifesteal in a weapon, and attacker takes damage of 14. And attacker takes damage of 14 is absolutely awful at level 25. Um, even if you stacked all your equipment with attacker takes damage of items, it really wouldn't have much of an effect once you're in level 25 zones. Um, it does have 7% lifesteal, which is one of the main reasons people like Amruns. And uh, if you compare it to its gem analog, which is the Perfect Skull, the Perfect Skull has 4% lifesteal and 3% mana steal. Um, and the reason why people tend to like the Amrune over the Perfect Skull is because a lot of the times you're socketing a weapon for a mercenary, and mercenaries do not use mana. So, uh, so the Perfect Skull loses in that category. Now, if you were socketing an item specifically for yourself, like if you were a uh, paladin, if you were a um, uh, an Amazon or something like that, and you desperately needed some mana steal along with the life steal, the perfect skull might be a good choice. But a lot of the times, I notice that when people are socketing a weapon, they are more often than not um, putting a like a shale rune or something in there to increase the attack speed. Um, so am rune very useful for the seven percent life steal. Uh, not much use outside of that. Uh, next we have a list, uh, on the list is the Soul Rune, which has, again, plus 9 to minimum damage. And it's important to note that minimum damage is exceedingly better than maximum damage. Um, the reason for this is because when you are increasing your minimum, you are shortening the gap between your two damage um, modifiers. So, for instance, if I have a modifier of 1 
to 100, I can deal damage anywhere in between those numbers. So increasing my max doesn't necessarily help, uh, but increasing my min will make my minimum closer to my maximum and will actually make things far, far, far better for me. Uh, minimum damage can also come into play on uh, skills like Vengeance, and, uh, and obviously, as you can see, you could stack minimum damage jewels. So uh, if you had a, a decent weapon at level 27 with like four sockets, you could just throw four minimum damage jewels in there, and you would be looking at um, 36 to minimum damage, which is a pretty hefty amount of minimum damage, and, um, and it would have a rather large effect on your, on your output. Believe it or not, minimum damage can, can really increase the amount of damage you can do, especially with skills like Vengeance. Um, there's also another component here, which is damage reduced by 7. And what that does is, is any damage, which is physical, that comes in will automatically re be reduced by 7. So if somebody does 100 damage to you, it will only be 93. Um, if you have multiple of these in your helmet, like say you made a 3-socket helmet, you just threw in Soul, 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 you would have, uh, what is that, 21... I believe that's 21 um, damage reduction and uh, so basically anyone that hits you for a hundred would only hit you for uh, what is it 79 which is not bad uh, damage reduced by only works against physical though and there's also magic damage reduced by and things like that um, I actually did a experiment one time and I literally just made a three socket helmet through see three soul runes in it and put it on my mercenary to see if it would increase the survivability and believe it or not it actually worked pretty well um, him taking 21 less damage from everything that hit him was uh, was actually quite useful to him. Um, anyway, as a general gem here, there's really no analogs. There's no plus minimum damage gem, uh, and there is no uh, plus uh, or negative damage reduced by gem. So, uh, so this is uh, an interesting one that really doesn't have a gem counterpart. Uh, next on the list is one of the most useful gems in the game, in my opinion, and that is the Shale Rune. And you will burn through Shale Runes like crazy. Uh, the 20% increased attack speed, the 20% faster hit recovery, and the 20% faster block rate are all useful. If you want to put this in a shield, you can get 20% faster block rate. If you want to put this in an armor or a helmet, you can get 20% uh, faster hit recovery. And if you want to put this in a weapon, you can get 20% increased attack speed. Um, I have used Shale Runes for just about everything. Um, I put a shale rune in my Baron Air Star. I put uh, two shale runes in a uh, Hon Sudan Yari for a mercenary and combined it with an Am rune for lifesteal. Um, shale runes are just uh, amazing all around, uh, even for recipes as well. And I noticed that uh, as a general rule, I seem to burn through shale runes uh, with a crazy speed. Um, no matter what I do, I never have enough shale runes. And, uh, and there is no gem counterpart for the shale rune either, which is uh, interesting. Uh, the next on the list is the Dole Rune, and the Dole Rune has uh, two effects on it, which is hit causes monster to flee and weapons, which is really only useful for characters who need monsters to run away, which is usually like uh, an Amazon would prefer a monster to run away. Although hit causes monster to flee does not work on bosses or like elites and things like that, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of useless in that regard. Um, it is interesting from a standpoint of you can shoot the other monsters, make them run away, and then fight the boss mano e mano. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, armor is replenished life plus seven, and uh, while replenished life plus seven is actually kind of nice, the level requirement of thirty-one kind of ruins it. Um, at level thirty-one, you're going to be using a lot better gear than replenished life seven, and um, even if you took like at level 31, you could probably find a four socket armor. Even if you put four of these in an armor, you're you're not talking about an, an amazing amount of, uh, of of regeneration. I mean, you're only talking about 28 points of regeneration, and um, and at level 31, there's like I said, there's a lot better gear out there. You can even find gear that has regeneration on it. So I, I know of one armor, and specifically a unique armor, I think it has almost like 31 regeneration points on it. That is that is low enough that you could use it before you could use dole runes. So um, it's a very odd rune. doesn't have a lot of, uh, of good use case scenarios. I think in any situation where you might put a dull rune in a weapon, you'd probably end up putting a Nef rune in there instead for the knockback, because knockback works a lot better than hit causes monster to flee. That's just me. Um, next on the list is the Hell rune, and the Hell rune is a very interesting rune because it has negative requirements. Um, it has other uses as well in the Herodric Cube and, of course, um, in, uh, in recipes. But uh, it, as a specific rune, you can do some very interesting things with it. Um, say, for instance, you found a really high defense, um, like, magic plate. Uh, maybe like a, an ornate plate. 
which is really high level um, and has really high strength requirement. But then you took these and you threw them into the um, into the item. You could reduce the amount of strength that is required for that item by every single gem that you uh, that you put in there. And the very interesting thing about this is that um, if you do it properly, you can actually make some kind of ridiculous like low level armor uh, that uh, that that will basically carry you through the entire first part of the game. Um, imagine if you will. Um, you, uh, you found an ancient armor. Let's use an ancient armor as an example, because ancient armors don't have a level requirement. Uh, four socket ancient armor, and then you socketed it with, uh, with four hell runes. The ancient armor would have a strength requirement of zero and would have about 250 defense on it. Um, and you would literally be rocking a 250 defense plate at level one. Um, and if that doesn't sound enticing, I don't know what else to tell you. There's, there are other uses for it as well, of course. Um, another interesting use for the Hellrune um, is uh, making higher level equipment easier to wear. So, you know, say for instance you had a really, really nice plate of armor, but it's just like really, really high strength requirement and there's nothing you could do about it. And you'd really love to use it on your sorceress or your druid or something, but you can't. You could socket it and throw a uh, Hellrune in there and it does make it easier for you to equip by 15%, uh, which is very nice. Um, there's really not much more to say about the Hellrune. The negative requirements kind of speak for themselves. Um, it is important to note, though, that you can find jewels that will give negative 15% requirements. Um, so the weapon one is the only one that really stands out there at the negative 20. And the jewels that give negative 15% requirements also have other effects, which means that you can find a jewel that gives negative requirements and has something, you know, like like uh like plus to mana after each kill or um or some resistances on it or something of that sort and uh, and so the hell rune kind of looks less desirable if as you start to collect negative 15 percent requirement jewels especially if those jewels have other effects on them uh, so keep that in mind uh, next on the list is the io rune and uh, these runes are kind of interesting to talk about in a pair so let's go ahead and talk about all these together um, and that is the io the um, the foul rune, the co rune, the lum rune. All right. So each one of these has an analog in the gem form. Obviously, the io rune is vitality, so it has a, a analog in um, the perfect ruby. Um, the lum rune is energy, so I guess that would be the uh, sapphire. The co rune is dexterity, which we have an actual dexterity gem, and then of course the foul rune is strength, which we have the uh, perfect amethyst. So each one of these is 10, no matter what you put it in, of that particular stat. So 10 vitality, 10 energy, 10 dexterity, or 10 strength. And um, if you look at the ruby, we don't get vitality. We get actual raw life. And uh, the only downside to this is that vitality also gives uh, stamina, which we don't necessarily need. So it's not a big deal. Um, also, it really depends on your character. So it's very important to note that when it comes to vitality, you get different amount of life per character so every character has a different life per vitality and uh, so 10 vitality on one character is not going to mean the same thing as it is on another so keep that in mind um, same thing with energy um, so 38 energy or 10 uh, 30 38 mana or 10 energy um, and those two considerations are interesting um, and then the same thing for um, dexterity dexterity has different effects for different characters um, it's it's just it depends on the, the specific character. Like, you're going to need a lot more dexterity to cap out your shield block, for instance, on, like, a sorceress than you would on a paladin. Um, and that's interesting. And then, of course, we have the strength rune. And um, the very interesting thing about these is that if you look at them, IO runes can be socketed in anything, or the lum, or the co, or the foul, and get that strength, whereas the perfect ruby only works in armor or helms, and all of these only give their effects in armor and helms. So... The real standout here for the IO, the Lum, and the Co, the Co and Falrune, is that they they work in weapons and shields as well as armor and helms. So if you really wanted to have some strength or dex or vitality or energy or whatever in a in a weapon or a shield, these runes can come in handy. But I think for the most part, the gems kind of win out in all of these categories, and I don't think a lot of people are just throwing in raw stats into items. Um, and usually when they are, it's a helmet for a mercenary, and the perfect emesis works just fine in that regard. And um, that's, that's really all there is to that. 
So uh, we're going to put these back. Uh, these are, are kind of useful for their stat points, but I think most people would rather prefer to use the gems anyway because these gems are much more useful for other purposes. Or runes, sorry. The Lem Rune is 75% uh, extra gold for monsters and 50% extra gold for monsters and armor. Um, it doesn't have a lot of uses outside of runes. There are some really good rune words that you can use Lem Runes in, like treachery, and uh, I think you can use it in, um, is, it, is it wealth? Could be wrong on that one. But um, but it's an amazing rune word for its um, for its properties as a rune. It's an amazing rune for its properties as a rune word, but not so much as its properties for, you know, just simply slapping an armor. I mean, if you wanted to take four of these and throw it in armor, you'd get 200% extra gold, I guess. Um, extra gold for monsters can be gotten on items, though, which is, uh, which is very interesting. And, um, like, for instance, if I had chance guards or if I had uh, gold wrap, um, if I had uh, a wealth armor... Um, things like that all have gold find on them, and it, so it kind of seems not the greatest. Um, next on the list is the Pull Rune, and Pull Rune is damage to demons and enhanced defense. 30% uh, enhanced defense is actually not bad for armor, shields, and helms, and I think I'd probably only ever want to use it in armor if the armor just had amazing defense already. But, uh, but I could imagine other such interesting runes to put in items. At level 45, 30% uh, enhanced defense might not even be the greatest amount. Um, it's interesting when it's used in a rune word, because that 30% enhanced defense stacks onto whatever the rune word applies, which is nice. And the damage to demons um, is not really the greatest. That It's really a, uh, a niche thing. There are items in the game that have some pretty nice damage to demons on them, like Laying of Hands, which have 300%. But um, most people don't stack pull runes in an item to get more uh, damage to demons. So it's kind of a, a moot point there. Um, like I said, they're really the only real good use on this is the 30% enhanced defense. And even that is not really the greatest because there are better options. Um, there's really no analog over here except for maybe the, uh, the emerald. And it's not going to provide you with 30% enhanced defense. It's only going to provide you with a small defense bonus based on the dexterity it provides. Uh, next on the list is the Um Rune, and speaking of the better choice to the Pull Rune, is the, the All Resistance Jewel. Um, now, the analog to this one is obviously the perfect diamond, and uh, when you think about putting this in a armor or a helmet, you look at the perfect diamond and you realize, well, in an armor and a helmet, perfect diamond does attack rating. So definitely not useful. So the Um Rune is more useful in an armor, a helmet, um, and it is also more useful in a shield at 22 to all resistance versus 19 to all resistance. So it's important to note that as well. Another interesting thing about the Umrun is it gives chance for open wounds. And if you need chance for open wounds, this is actually great to sock it into a weapon. Um, open wounds is a 8 second uh, bleed that triggers onto a target. And that 8 second bleed will prevent the monster from regenerating during those 8 seconds. And it is most notably used for Ubers because Ubers cannot be um, killed unless you have some way to stem their regeneration. And they will regenerate. They will always regenerate unless they are under the effect of open wounds or constantly being beat down. And the problem is, is that um, if they ever stop getting beat down, they regenerate like that. And all their health comes back. So, uh, so there are definitely some interesting use case scenarios where socketing an Umrun in a weapon might be useful. Obviously, socketing an Umrun in a armor or helmet can be very useful as well. Keep in mind, though, that there are some jewels out there that you can get your hands on that have plus 15 all res on them and may have other stats. So, uh, so keep your eyes out for an all res 15 jewel, which you can use in place of an Umrun, and then you can keep the Umrun for something more important. Um... It's definitely nice to have a couple of runes laying around for all res. Um, there are quite a few really nice uses for an all res rune. Like, for instance, um, say you have a Guardian Angel Templar coat, which has that really nice 10% to all maximum resistances, uh, but it doesn't have any resistances on the armor. A very good use for it is to upgrade the Templar coat and then put the rune in there to actually provide those resistances so you, uh, so you actually have them. Next rune on the list is the Mal rune, and the Mal rune has the weapon modifier Prevent Monster Heal, which is very similar to the Um rune's Chance of Open Wounds. Now, the difference between um, Prevent Monster Heal and Chance of Open Wounds is that Prevent Monster Heal lasts for 20 minutes, whereas 
the um, the open wound effect lasts for eight seconds. Um, prevent monster heal. The problem with it is, is that it doesn't work on Ubers, which is uh, probably a deliberate move by by Blizzard North to prevent us from being able to to kill their regeneration. They wanted them to regenerate, in other words. So uh, so it, this does not work on Ubers, but this one does. Um, now the Mal rune also has magic damage reduced by seven, which, as we were talking about earlier with the Soul rune is a very effective uh, means of reducing incoming damage. Now, the beautiful thing about the Soul Rune uh, versus, or the, the Mal Rune versus the Soul Rune is that magic damage reduced by is actually far more useful than physical damage reduced by. There are tons and tons of effects in the game which have very low magical damage but will be spammed at you. And the way that this works is pretend you have a lightning bolt like, like uh, charged bolts that come out of lightning enchanted monsters. These charged bolts are... Um, absolutely tiny damage but they hit you so many times in rapid succession that they will cause massive amounts of damage well having something like magic damage reduced by will kill most of the damage from those effects because they're only like 20 to 30 damage in the first place and if you have a decent amount of magic damage reduced by you can reduce the majority of those hits piece by piece now the downside to magic damage reduced by is that when you get hit by a giant hit so, for instance, the difference between getting hit for, like, 50 damage and reducing 7 and the difference between getting hit by 1,000 damage and reducing 7 is pretty vast. Um, you know, a 50 damage hit reduced by 7 is going to be nice, whereas a 1,000 damage hit reduced by 7 is like, okay, that didn't really help very much. So, um, would you actually socket this in an item, though, for the magic damage reduced by? Probably not. Um, would you socket this in an item for the prevent monster heal? Probably not. I hate to say it, but neither one of these effects is really going to be something that you're going to put in a weapon for the most part. And uh, and there are far better uses for a Mal rune than Prevent Monster Heal. Next on the list is the Ist rune. And as you can see, the Ist rune is an amazing rune with weapons 30% better chance of magic items and armor, helmet, and shields 25%. Now, of course, we do have an analog, which is the perfect topaz. Perfect Topaz is armor and helm 24%. So in those situations where you're socketing an armor or a helmet, the Topaz is actually pretty much the superior choice because Istruins are very valuable and you really don't want to waste them for that 1% extra unless you're putting it in something that is just absolutely amazing. Like say you have an Ethereal Scalder's Ire or something, which is a pretty rare find, and you want to just get that absolutely amazing 1% extra magic find for your F Scalder's Ire, then yeah, that's a, that's a good choice. Um, but um, as you can see, shields and weapons is really where the Istern shines, and weapons is really the shining point because it gets 5% extra magic find in weapons. There are quite a few good use case scenarios for Istruins. Um, you can actually take six of these and put it in a uh, phase blade, for um, for a really, really good magic find weapon. Uh, you can also take two of these and put it in an Alibaba for 60% uh, extra magic find on top of what is already a very awesome magic find sword. Um, of course, uh, the six isted uh, phase blade I think wins out, but who has six ists laying around? It's actually a pretty rare rune. And uh, there's really not much more to say about the ist rune. It's, it's just an amazing magic find rune. Um, it, it definitely has some analogs but like i said it's only in uh in armor and helmets so keep that in mind next on the list is the gull rune and the gull rune has a 20 percent bonus to attack rating for weapons and five percent maximum poison resist for uh armor helms and shields and most people aren't too worried about the maximum poison resist so i don't think people really care about that one and the 20 percent bonus to attack rating i don't think is enough that people would socket this in a weapon for also keep in mind that it's a percentage bonus to your attack rating, so if you don't have a lot of attack rating in the first place, a, a base attack rating, it's not really going to do you very good. Um, you may be, if you're uh, suffering from attack rating issues, you may be better off finding a better attack rating ring, or maybe some attack rating charms to actually boost your base attack rating, so that your skills can function properly. Um, the, the skills that you have will have an attack rating bonus on them of like 300 or 400%, but like I said, if you don't have any attack rating to modify, it, uh, it doesn't work very well. Um, I don't think a lot of people are going to be socketing this into anything for the attack rating bonus or the maximum poison resist for the most part. Um, unless they just really needed that 5% maximum poison resist. Maybe they're, maybe they're PvPers and they're fighting against a rabies druid and they just want to get that 95%. It could be interesting. Um, next on the list is the Vex Rune. And the Vex Rune has 7% mana steal per hit. And as you can see, that's an analog to the... Um, 
Amrune and the Perfect Skull. So Amrune is the lifesteal and Perfect Skull is the combination of both. Uh, whereas this is straight 7%. We also have an armor uh, helm and shield use of 5% maximum fire resist, which is definitely very nice to have. Um, if you have this in an armor helm or shield and get 5% maximum fire resist, that is much more useful than 5% maximum poison resist. Um, and what's the, what these 5% maximums do, let's go ahead and talk about all of them real quick, is that uh, each one of these 5% maximums essentially make it so that the cap of 75% is raised to 80%. And this is uh, it's important to note that it does not give you the resistances. So despite the fact that it raises the cap, you still have to have the resistances to get to the cap. Um, which makes them a little less desirable if you can't actually reach that goal. Um, so next on the list is our um, Ohm Rune. And uh, Ohm Rune is 50% enhanced deep damage in a weapon, which is actually kind of nice. 5% uh, to maximum cold resistance. And uh, again, a cold resistance is definitely nice, but uh, I'm not sure what I would socket this into to get 5% to maximum. And the 50% ED, I can't imagine myself just using an Ohm Rune and a weapon. I mean, I would much rather prefer to attack faster than gain a small bonus in damage, which is usually why I end up going with the uh, the Shale Rune. Although, uh, what some people will do instead of using Shale Runes is they will find a Jewel that has 15% increased attack speed and 40% enhanced damage, and then they have the best of both worlds, essentially. Um, those Jewels are exceedingly rare, though, so good luck finding one. Um, next on the list is the Low Rune, which has Deadly Strike and Lightning Resistance Max. Um, the Deadly Strike is very interesting because Deadly Strike is uh, double damage. So it is a percentage chance to deal double physical damage on your next attack. So if I deal 2,000 physical damage, I will be dishing out 4,000 physical damage if Deadly Strike affects. And uh, there are certain uh, skills that this does not work on, like it does not work on Vengeance. And it does not work on a lot of elemental damage skills, but it does work on physical damage. So uh, if you are a, um, I don't know, like a, a, a shape-shifting druid um, who uses uh, fury, or if you are a, uh, a barbarian, um, you can actually stack this with critical strike. Um, there are definitely a lot of uses for a low rune specifically, and um, it's kind of hard to choose exactly who you would put this on. Most people would get their Deadly Strike from other sources, like for instance um, a High Lord's Wrath, or maybe a Gillum's Face, or Gore Riders, or something of that nature, which would go on your head, helm, or boots, um, or, your, or, your, or your neck piece. Um, also, weapons tend to have Deadly Strike on them too, so it's it's really a case-by-case uh, -case scenario. I guess if you were in some sort of very specific build, and you just wanted to cap out your Deadly Strike, and you didn't need anything else, Maybe you would use a low rune for that, but low runes are such a high value rune. I just can't see anyone using it specifically for that deadly strike. Uh, next on the list is the Sir rune, and the Sir rune has uh, hits blinds target on it, which which is an amazing effect. But uh, the Sir rune is so valuable that I really doubt you're ever going to see anybody socket an item uh, specifically for the hits blinds target effect. Uh, in armor and helms, it also has increases maximum mana by 5%, which is an amazing effect if you have lots of mana. It's not so amazing effect if you don't have lots of mana. So keep that in mind. If you only have a tiny bit of mana, 5% of, uh, of my 20 is, uh, is absolutely nothing. Whereas if I had like 10,000 mana or something, like some crazy energy shield sorceress, 5% mana would be a huge amount. And in shields, it gives 50 to mana um, on, you know, if you socket it there. Now, I don't really see anybody using this specifically as a, a socketed item. Um, the 50 to mana is also um, similar to the Perfect Sapphire, which gives 38 to mana, so not much of a difference there between the two. Although the, the Sir Rune does work in the, uh, in the shields. 5% uh, maximum mana can also be very similar to the 38 mana that's on the Perfect Sapphire if you have a very low mana pool. So um, 38 to mana is actually the equivalent of quite a lot of, of percentage if you have a very low mana pool in general. Like with my little 20, my 20 mana pool here, this Sapphire is my entire mana pool and more, which basically tells you that that's almost like 150% of my man maximum mana. So um, this, this would be a better choice than a Sir Rune, for instance, in my case scenario. Um, and if I ever were in a situation where I absolutely wanted maximum mana, it's probably going to be an energy, energy shield sorceress, just so I can get that, that amazing bonus. 
because five percent of my energy shield sorceresses mana might be a, a hell of a lot more than thirty-eight. Um, but I, I did, again, I can't really see using that as just a socketable item. Uh, next on the list is the Burr Rune, and the Burr Rune is 20% chance of crushing blow in a weapon. And armor damage reduced by 8%, helm damage reduced by 8%, and shields damage reduced by 8%. Now this is amazing, because um, it not only does it have two very good use case scenarios, it's also an extremely valuable rune just in general. Um, and 20% crushing blow is absolutely amazing to have in a weapon. Um, and damage reduced by 8% is absolutely amazing to have in a shield a helmet or armor. Um, if I had, for instance, a storm shield and I socketed a burr rune in there, storm shields already have 35% damage reduced by, plus 8% would mean it would be 43% uh, damage reduced by on one shield. I would literally almost completely cap out my damage reduced by just by simply putting this burr rune in a storm shield. And 50% is the cap, by the way. Um, crushing Blow is also absolutely amazing to have and does stack up to 100%, and this could be absolutely amazing in a weapon so that I could get more percentage on my Crushing Blow. I don't know specifically what weapon that would be, but um, but I do know that um, if you were to put a Burr Rune in a weapon and get that 20% Crushing Blow and stack it with, like, for instance, Gore Riders or Gillum's Face, um, you could get very close to that 100% cap on uh, Crushing Blow, which means that every single time you attack with a, uh, a, a melee attack or a ranged attack, you would be dealing out that crushing blow damage, um, which is very, 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 very nice. Um, next on the list is the Jaw Rune, which has ignores target's defense, uh, increases maximum life, and, uh, and plus 50 to life on shield. Now, uh, increased maximum life is absolutely amazing because most people are stacking life like on, on a regular basis. But keep in mind that 5% to maximum life, if I was at, say, 2,000 life, 5% to maximum life is only 100, so it's not as amazing as it might seem. Um, and 2,000 is a really high use case scenario, um, unless you're talking about like a, a, a bear, like a shape-shifting bear with, uh, with Oak Sage. Um, the Enor's target defense is very interesting because ITD is, uh, is very useful to allow you to make sure you're hitting your targets. What ITD does is it takes the attack rating out of the equation, but your level is still uh, accounted for. The maximum percentage that you can ever hit a target is 95%. So that means that um, that even with ITD and even at the uh, at the same level as the monster that you're fighting, you will always have a 5% chance to miss. So keep that in mind. Um, if you are lower level than the monster, you will actually lose percentage chance to hit the target because ITD does not affect your level difference issue. So uh, like say for instance I was only level 40 and I was fighting level 87 Diablo in hell, um, I'm going to have a pretty huge mischance on him just simply because of our level difference. And uh, and, and that's important. Um, would you actually use a jaw rune for the ITD in something? Maybe. Um, ITD is actually a very, very amazing statistic. And if you were a character that specifically did not have attack rating, um, like for instance, let's say you wanted to be an enchant sorceress or like a bow necromancer or something, and there's absolutely no way that you could apply attack rating skills to your dilemma, ITD might be um, very useful for you there. Uh, there are a lot of rune words, though, that have ITD in them, and there are a lot of weapons that have ITD on them, and, uh, and if you are in that use case scenario, you might just simply use one of those. But maybe you have like the absolute perfect weapon for your build, but it doesn't have ITD on it, and you would prefer to have ITD. I mean, in that case, you could use a Jaw Rune. Um, do keep in mind, though, that Jaw Runes are probably one of the most valuable runes in the entire game, like bar none. Um, just simply because of, number one, their usefulness with ITD, number two, their usefulness in rune words, and uh, number three, their usefulness in rune words. They have so many rune words that they're useful in that everybody wants a freaking Jaw Rune. It's, uh, it's crazy. Um, next on the list is the Cham Rune, and the Cham Rune is a... Uh, a rune that has a very interesting effect, which is uh, freezes target and cannot be frozen. Now, I have heard a lot of people say that they take these uh, cham runes and they'll use them to give their mercenary cannot be frozen, because it's one of the easiest ways to get your merc cannot be frozen. And if your mercenary does not have cannot be frozen, it's an issue. Um, when your mercenary is uh, is constantly being chilled, he's being slowed down, and when he's being slowed down, he's not hitting. And if he's not hitting, he's not stealing uh, life, and, uh, and this can be very detrimental to his health in general. Freezes target is a very interesting effect as well. What it does is it actually freezes the target still. 
for a certain duration. There are many skills and spells that have Freeze's target on them. Like, for instance, um, Freezing Arrow on Amazon, uh, Glacial Spike on Sorceress, uh, and so forth and so on. And these abilities are absolutely amazing to, to stop monsters in their tracks for crowd control. So uh, keep that in mind when you're thinking about a Chamrune. Um, those are the two main effects that you could socket an item for. Now, a lot of what a lot of people use Cham Runes for is they combine them to make a Zod Rune, or they also will um, <laughs> use them for those those mercenaries. But um, it's a, it's an interesting rune. There's also uh, some rune words with Cham in it as well, I believe. But uh, I don't know if there are that many. Um, the Zod Rune, which is the last rune on our on our trip down Rune Word Rune, rune Lane, is um, a very very interesting rune, and uh, and it's very hard to talk about this rune because it only has one effect, which is indestructible. So what do you do with a rune that makes things indestructible? Well, the Zod Rune goes hand in hand with items that are ethereal. So if you have an item that is an amazing ethereal like boost to damage or defense or whatever it is just a huge boost in its uh, in its its usability and its and its functionality so you know if with a weapon when a weapon is ethereal they gain a huge bonus to their damage um, ethereal items also have decreased stat requirements as well which is also very nice and uh, and the main problem with ethereal items is that they break they literally just break and then they're gone forever so if you find like an ethereal Tomb Reaver Cryptic Axe, or if you find like an ethereal um, Bone Snap Maul, um, you know, you might want to like say upgrade the Bone Snap Maul to its hell counterpart and then zod it so that it has, uh, you know, indestructibility. Or maybe you find an ethereal uh, Templar Coat and you upgrade that and it has like almost 4,000 defense or, or, or whatever how much defense the Templar Coat has when it's upgraded to its hell counterpart and it's ethereal. You know, 4,000 defense definitely sounds amazing, doesn't it? Or, um, you know, an amazing amount of damage from the Tomb Reaver Cryptic Axe. But the problem is, is that we, we can't use it as players, because if we use it as players, it will break. So, um, so one of the most interesting uses for the Zod Rune is to find ethereal items that are absolutely amazing, then socket those ethereal items with the Zod Rune to prevent them from breaking. And, um, and... I think there are a lot of really good use case scenarios for Zod runes. Um, they tend not to be worth more than a Jaw rune, for instance. If you were talking about value, uh, Jaw runes are worth more than Zod runes just simply because Jaw runes have so many more useful rune words that they are capable of. Um, on top of that, the Zod rune is much more rare as well. Um, you will find more Jaw runes than you're going to find Zod runes. Zod runes is literally one of the hardest to find runes in the game. And um, when you do find a Zod rune, uh, a lot, what a lot of people use Zod runes for is a Breath of the Dying rune word um, or to make ethereal items indestructible. That's really what, uh, what Zod runes are for. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this series on going over every single rune. And by the way, these runes were in order of, of their um, creation. So, uh, so each one of these, from the beginning to the end, is actually numbered. So the L rune is number one, L rune is number two, etc., etc., all the way to the Zod rune, which is number 33. Um, and keep in mind that every single one of these runes can be transmuted up to the next rune by using a cube recipe. So that's why I was talking about people will take the Cham runes and turn them into a Zod. Nobody's taking Jaw runes and turning them into Cham runes, though, because Jaw runes are more valuable. And uh, sometimes people will transmute burr runes into jaw runes because that's that's useful. Um, but because of this transmutation, um, take for instance, it takes ter two burr runes to make one jaw rune. So effectively, a jaw rune is worth two burr runes. But it's it, it is not always that simple. And uh, and the problem with that is this: some runes are just way more valuable than others. Um, take for instance the ist rune which is below the Gull and the Vex rune, um, I think Ist runes are far more valuable than Gull and Vex runes, and I probably wouldn't do a one-to-one -one trade for a Gull rune, even though the Gull rune is higher than the Ist rune. And I might not even do a one-to-one -one trade for an Ist to a Vex, because I just, I need Ist runes so often that, um, that I'd rather just use the Ist rune. Um, um runes also are extremely, extremely useful, 
and uh, and tend to be worth more than their position in the tree. And uh, and because of the all resistances that you can put in armor and weapons and things like that, as well as the open wounds effect, which is also nice, um, they tend to be worth more than a Malrune, for instance, which is the one above it. Um, you know, it's it's just um runes and ist runes and jaw runes tend to be some of the most useful runes in the game, and so people will not trade so equally for those. But uh, but for a lot of the other runes, if you're transmitting up, for instance, if you find an ohm rune, you can usually trade it for two vex runes, or if you find a vex rune, you can usually trade it for two gull runes, etc., etc. You can transmute up, but you can't transmute down. If you could transmute down, tram, ch Cham would be one of the uh, most valuable runes in the game because it would transmute into two jaw runes, which would make it even more valuable. Or the Zod rune could transmute into, uh, into what? Uh, four jaw runes. So the Zod would be probably the most valuable rune in the game if you could transmute down, but you can't. Anyway, as always, I hope that you guys and gals enjoy these videos. And... Um, Keep watching.